Hello, welcome to Movie Summaries. Today we are summarizing a 2019 horror and mystery movie called Sea Fever. Fair warning, there are spoilers in this summary. Enjoy, and be sure to subscribe to watch more videos weekly and hit like. The movie is based on the ocean and the life that exists there. Humans have sensed its edges, ventured only to a shallow depth, but science seeks more. The movie begins with people celebrating someone's birthday at a university lab. A PhD student named Siobhan, who is in the next room, wants no part of it and is busy with her studies. Siobhan's professor approaches her and asks her to join others in the celebration, but Siobhan declines the offer. The professor sends her on a sea tour to examine deep marine organisms with some strangers to help her gain some real-world experience and make friends. Siobhan expectedly tries to resist going, but the professor threatens to fail her should she not go on the tour. Siobhan puts on her beanie cap, some warm clothes, and reluctantly joins the other crew members aboard the fishing trawler, Neam Sinor. Johnny and his auntie Ciara welcome her aboard the trawler and introduce her to Gerard and Freya. They are all surprised that Siobhan showed up at last. While Gerard and others are going to the middle of the ocean to fish, Siobhan is planning to take pictures of their catch, hoping to find an anomaly and do a short dive for her PhD research. Gerard has been down on his luck and hasn't had a big haul in a while. He has promised to pay Omid and Sooty after returning from the sea. Deep down, Omid wants to quit and find a better paying job, but is stuck because he has a baby on the way. Later, when Siobhan takes off her cap, the crew learn that she is a redhead. They are appalled as they believe that having a redhead aboard the ship brings bad luck. Gerard even wonders about kicking her out, but Freya reminds him that they have already spent the fee she paid. The trawler only has four bunks, as the crew works in two shifts. Three people work at a time, while the other three sleep. A shift lasts for about two hours. Siobhan worries that sleep loss could result in psychosis, but Johnny brushes her concerns aside. The trawler also has a water filtration system, designed by the in-house engineer, Omid. Siobhan is amazed by his work, and bluntly asks him why he is doing this low-status job, when he is such a talented designer, making Omid feel weird. The luck is yet again not on Gerard and Frey's side. They learn from the Coast Guard that the region that they were supposed to fish has been included in the exclusion zone. Exclusion zones are areas into which entry is forbidden, especially by ships or aircraft. Unbeknownst to others, Gerard takes them into the zone anyway, as he is desperate for a large haul of fish to pay his debt. On the way to their destination, Siobhan struggles to mingle with the others like always, and she spends most of her time reading her books. One night, Freya finds her reading by herself outside in the ship's deck, and hangs out with her. In the exclusion zone, Gerard notices a large shoal, and becomes hopeful. However, his dreams are shattered when he realizes that the shoal is moving unusually fast. Lo and behold, the ship collides into some unknown object, and becomes immobile. Titanic tees. The collision damages the boat's radio, rendering them contactless with the rest of the world. Amid discovers multiple strange breaches in the hull that exude a blue-green slime. The slime is changing the texture of the wood and piercing through it like it's paper. Siobhan speculates that it could be barnacles. Gerard asks her to go diving to cut the boat free from the barnacles. She is naturally skeptical about going underwater right now, especially when the unknown creature could be anything. However, Gerard convinces her, reminding her that she is here to look for anomalies anyway. Johnny helps her put on her diving gear, and Gerard hands her a gutting knife before she jumps into the water. See what science makes a girl do. Underwater, Siobhan learns that the things stuck on the boat are the growing tentacles of some organism. She proceeds to cut the tentacles off, but is soon interrupted. When the enormous bioluminescent organism appears behind her, Siobhan freaks out and races to the surface before the organism could latch its tentacles on her. She shares the discovery with Gerard and others. However, instead of freaking out, Gerard becomes excited and plans to catch the giant squid-like creature. He orders for all hands to be on deck, despite Siobhan's reservations. The crew casts their net in an attempt to capture the creature. However, the creature is too heavy, and it almost capsizes the boat, forcing the crew to let go of the net. While releasing the net, Johnny's sleeve gets caught in the machinery, and he frantically starts screaming. The crew quickly come to help, but by the time they free him, his hand is sliced by the rope. Ouch. The crew then notice another ship nearby, Gerard doesn't want to share the profit he thinks he is about to make by catching the Squidward with anyone, but the fella doesn't really have any other choice than to contact the ship. I mean, beggars can't be choosers. Gerard sends out a flare signal, but it doesn't elicit any response from the ship. Gerard then decides to row to the ship to ask for help. When everyone refuses to accompany Gerard on the rowboat, Siobhan and Johnny volunteer to join him. They find the ship's deck unmanned. Strangely, the ship's radio has also been smashed. The trio then inspect the ship's cabin. To their horror, the trio discovered the dead body of the ship's crew, with one man appearing to have had his eyes removed. It seems that they committed mass suicide. 
Gerard speculates that they must have succumbed to sea fever and orders Siobhan and Johnny to not tell the others back in the boat about the ship's dead crew. After returning to their boat, they lie to the rest of the crew about the people on the ship. Fortunately, Frey and Omid have better news to share. The enormous organism has somehow let go of its grip, and the ship is free to go. Siobhan is not able to digest the fact that the sea animal let them go so easily, but Omid convinces her that sometimes miracles do happen. The crew again go on a panic mode. When Gerard and Frey revealed that the large mass is heading towards their ship, oh lord, not the squid again. Yet again, Gerard is not scared, and instead insists on catching the animal. Frey is skeptical about it, but he convinces her by reminding her that they would lose the boat if they return empty-handed to the shore. On Freya's orders, the crew shoots the net. Fortunately, it turns out it is not the squid, but a large catch of fish, which lifts the crew's spirits. During their celebratory dinner, Siobhan and Johnny start flirting with each other and discover they may like each other. Siobhan also begins to get along with the other crew members and starts to open up. There was a time when they called poor Siobhan bad luck, and now they deem her as the best research student that has ever been on their boat. Oh, how the time changes. During the dinner, Johnny suddenly declares that he feels hot and wants to go for a swim before leaving for the deck. It takes a while for the crew to register what Johnny just said and follow him outside. They drag Johnny back into the cabin, and Gerard asks him if he has brought drugs on the boat. Meanwhile, Sierra feels he is just trying to impress Siobhan. Siobhan quickly defends herself and says that she thinks Johnny's hand might be infected. Johnny refuses to allow anyone to check his hand. However, at Siobhan's request, he lets her check his eyes and she notices something moving inside. Johnny goes over to wash his face and suddenly he goes blind. His eyeballs then burst and release tiny organisms that slither down the drain and enter the ship's water system. Oh shit, here we go. Johnny screams in pain and eventually dies in front of everyone. As Sierra mourns his death, Siobhan gathers Gerard, Omid, and Freya to inform them about the parasites inside Johnny's eyes that probably got into the boat's water system. Omid panics and rushes to warn Sudi. He tells Sudi to get out of the shower, but he feels that he is just messing with him and continues to shower until the creatures bite him. Siobhan and Omid eventually break into the shower and rescue Sudi. Siobhan then buries herself in her books to distract herself from Johnny's death but she eventually breaks into tears. The crew later inspect the water filtration system and learn that it has been contaminated by the creatures, which have eaten through all its filters. Siobhan speculates that the small parasitic creatures are the larvae of the enormous sea creature whose eggs filled the slime. She also speculates that the saltwater larvae will probably die in fresh water in a few hours. Nevertheless, this causes panic among the crew, as they no longer have safe drinking water. They get into an argument and Siobhan reveals in frustration that everyone on the other ship was dead. The revelation shuts everyone up in a heartbeat. Omid and Siobhan later inspect the boat's water tank to check if the larva is dead. They carefully open the lid and pull out a dead larva. As Gerard steers the boat towards the shore, Siobhan studies the slime and discovers that slimes are filled with live eggs. She shares her findings with the other crew members and speculates that the animal must have mistook the boat for a whale and then latched onto it. It produced the progenerative substance. The slime got into Johnny's blood through his open wound. Siobhan says that they are vulnerable to get infected just like Johnny, and they must find a way to kill those eggs. Siobhan and Omid perform a range of experiments on the slime sample. They try to kill the larvae with UV light without success. With their boat still 30 hours away from the shore, Siobhan comes up with another idea. She is hopeful that maybe electrocuting the creature may do the trick. However, Frey is opposed to the idea, as it may irreparably damage the boat, but she eventually agrees and the crew prepares to electrify the trawler using the arc welder. They insulate the boat's important parts, wear rubber boots for protection, and pour salt water all over the boat to carry the current. The plan works, but Sudi's condition gets increasingly worse, and Freya gets impatient about reaching the shore safely. Siobhan tells them that it won't take them long to reach the shore, but they must still self-quarantine on the ship for at least 36 hours from when they destroy the eggs, so they don't risk infecting other people. That is how much time it took Johnny's infection to develop. However, Freya disagrees, and she wants to admit Sudi in a hospital as soon as possible. Siobhan then asks for Omid's help in keeping everyone on the boat to stop the infection. But even Omid feels that Sudi needs to be hospitalized, despite the risk of him infecting others. Dead bodies pile up on board, as Sudi too gives in to the infection. After failing to convince the other crew members to self-quarantine, Siobhan decides to disable the boat by entangling the propeller with a rope, and the boat's engine stops. It doesn't take Omid long to figure out that Siobhan is behind it. He drags her back into the cabin and tells everyone about her deed. This naturally enrages the crew members, and Sierra punches the girl. However, Siobhan stands by what she did. 
and tells them that she is not doing this for selfish reasons. She is doing this for the greater good of humanity. She makes them realize that they can't afford to risk the life of their loved ones back home. The crew eventually agree to follow strict quarantine measures. Siobhan checks everyone's eyes for possible infections. Siobhan, Omid, Freya, and Sierra pass the test. But unfortunately, Freya noticed parasites in Gerard's eyes. Faced with his impending doom, Gerard comes clean about driving the boat to the exclusion zone. He also reveals that the Coast Guard doesn't know where they are as a result of it. This enrages Sierra, and she blames Gerard for Johnny's death. Omid separates them and asks Freya to take Gerard away. Sierra realizes how wrong she was about Siobhan and apologizes to her. However, the old woman starts choking Siobhan mid-apology. What is going on? Afraid that Sierra might be infected, Siobhan climbs up the ladder to inform the others. Sierra panics and grabs Siobhan's legs, pleading with her to stop. However, the pleading soon turned into a possessed yelling and a frightened Siobhan kicks her off the ladder. Sierra hits her head on the floor and instantly dies from the head injury. Omid emerges from the hull and learns about Sierra's death. Siobhan rushes to inform Freya, but only to realize that Freya stabbed Gerard to death before the parasite could torture him to death. I mean, both ways to go seem like torture. Gerard's death makes Freya go a little crazy, and she insists on leaving for the shore in a rowboat. Omid and Siobhan try to convince her against abandoning the boat, but Freya tells him that she no longer cares for Niam Sinor. Before leaving, as Omid and Siobhan put Sierra's body into the boat's freezer, they hear noises coming from the water tank room and quickly go over to investigate. From the sound inside the tank, Siobhan guesses that there's only one larva remaining. She speculates that the larvae ate each other in order to survive in the fresh water, like tadpoles, until only one creature was left remaining. They heat the tank in order to weaken the creature and finally open the lid. To their dismay, they learn that the sole remaining larva has grown larger and eaten through the hole to return back to the ocean. With the giant hole in the hole, the boat begins to sink. They quickly return to the deck and set it on fire using alcohol to make a beacon. That's one hell of a beacon. Siobhan boards an inflatable raft and asks Omid to join her. Omid is scared of the raft as he doesn't know how to swim. He eventually musters up the courage and proceeds to get in the boat. However, he falls into the water and is pulled down by tentacles. Siobhan courageously dives in and rescues him. When they return to the raft, they notice help arriving in the distance. As they celebrate, they notice that Siobhan has sustained a cut on her wrist. She realizes that she is infected and dives back into the water, swimming towards the bioluminescent creature. Meanwhile, Omid watches as the help approaches. Damn, Siobhan, why did she have to get screwed? She didn't even want to go on this expedition to start with. Hope you enjoyed our summary. Make sure to like, subscribe, comment, and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos weekly. Thanks.